Hi everyone, welcome to Northern Ag TV and thanks for joining us for the Ag Report. Well, this week, Courtney Kibblewhite and I helped spread mental health awareness by talking about more than just the weather during the Garfield County Health Fair. If you're unfamiliar with the campaign, Beyond the Weather is a movement that helps normalize talking about challenges that we face as producers. We asked the Jordan Elementary students and community members to write one thing they are struggling with right now, demonstrating to everyone that they are not alone. By visiting beyondtheweather.com, you can access resources available in your area and hear some personal stories from ranchers themselves. Next Wednesday on the 9th at 7 p.m., Montana Farm Bureau is hosting the Supreme Court Candidate Forum at the Billings Hotel and Convention Center. This is going to be a very valuable opportunity for voters to see the stances that certain candidates have on issues. If you can't be there in person, make sure to tune in on KGHL at 7.90 a.m. or 94.7 f.m. Three members from the Montana Farm Bureau have been selected to attend seminars, network, and do one-on-one -on -one technical sessions through the National Farmers Union Beginning Farmers Institute. NFU's Beginning Farmer Institute is a free year-long training program intended to improve the health of your farm or ranch business. Those selected includes Zach Didier from Laurel, who started the cut flower operation Rody Farm, Kimberly Robinson from Keela, who started Run Dorper Run, which is a business that aims to provide high quality lamb meat and rental sheep for pasture and weed management, and Bo Milton from Ovando, who works as a licensed commercial herbicide applicator and general contractor, in addition to starting a regenerative farm and assisting with his family ranch in Joliet. For some Wyoming news, the Ag Department is accepting applications for conservation funding in Wyoming. This includes multiple programs, but the most valuable to farmers and ranchers, for example, Ag Conservation Easements, Ag Management Assistance, and Conservation Stewardship Programs. Contact your local FSA office. This Friday, the 4th of October, the Natrona County Farm and Ranch Bureau is hosting their annual banquet. Dinner is at 6 o'clock at the Hangar Bar and Grill. We'll be back with an overview of your markets right after this. From the beginning, we've worked closely with farmers. BNSF's ties to the agricultural community go back 175 years. Together, we've innovated to make the U.S. agriculture supply chain one of the most efficient and productive in the world. Our strong relationship powers BNSF still today and helps us move the nation like no one else can. At BNSF, we move the nation for you. Back with your markets. After reaching the highest level since the end of July, the live cattle complex charged a dollar to two dollars higher during yesterday's session. Not only that, but the feeders traded even better, making a two to three dollar rally. The fact that box beef prices have held strength along with these future prices makes for a good chance that feedlots will hold out for higher prices. Choice cuts are a tad higher at three hundred and a quarter. Compared to the last sale in Riverton, slaughter cows trended three to seven bucks higher, with instances of twelve dollars higher and bull steady. Breaker sold at one fifteen to one twenty two, down to ninety seven to one hundred nine on the lean ones. Bulls at one thirty five to one fifty one. Calves were steady with the previous sell, four hundred and thirty eight pound steers selling at three fifty to three sixty five, and heavy five weights at two seventy eight to three hundred two. One load of fancy heifer calves at four nineteen sold at three fifty nine. Good demand for replacements in slaughter cattle in Miles City this week. Big heavy cows at 125 and lightweights mostly 118. Young replacement cows sold at 181 to 192 per hundred weight and two to four year olds at 158 to 169. It seems to be a positive day all the way around. It seemed to have been a positive day all the way around as the wheat markets went ahead and made a higher move on, Wednesdays as, on Wednesday as well. Concerns about U.S. dryness and other weather issues around the world continue to provide underlying support. The corn market rallied, pressing for a new high and soybeans steadying back from overnight lows. That's it for today's Ag Report on Northern Ag TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Grace McDonald.